Good evening, everyone. Um, so I am trying my own experiment to make some new underdark tiles, and uh, I came up with a variation of the dirty cup method or the pour painting method. If you look it up on YouTube, you're gonna find hundreds of videos of people making really amazing things. Um, however, I wasn't seeing anyone do it one on pink foam or you know the foam we typically use. And two, everyone was using really, 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 really expensive art supplies, um, which I couldn't really afford to do, especially for how many I'm gonna have to make. So I played around and I came up with something that works really, really well. It's very easy and best of all, it's really cheap. Uh, so the things you're gonna need is I went ahead and in my experiments I didn't go ahead and paint it, but I say go ahead and paint it whatever your main color is going to be. I decided to go ahead and do black. Um, I didn't prime this in any special way. It doesn't look like it's eating through, but I may amend that to say prime it with Mod Podge or uh, Elmer's or something like that. So for the ingredients, all you're gonna need is a bunch of paper towels. This is super messy. Secret ingredient. Pledge Floor Care finish with Future Shine, or just Pledge Floor Care. Uh, I know a lot of people have used variations of a product like this for like their washes, so that's why I had this on hand, and I thought to use it instead of a Flow Aid or um, any of the more expensive products or silicones, so that's what this is going to do. Then, next thing you're gonna need is water and cheap paints in all the colors that you're gonna need, and a whole lot of good old Elmer's glue. So none of these paints are nice. They're all the super cheap stuff. Uh, and these are the colors that I use, and I'm going to add just a little tiny bit of glow in the dark paint to my blue and my white so that they will have some glow to them. And uh, you're also going to need a whole lot of little disposable cups, popsicle sticks to stir with, These should all be things we probably already have, and some kind of container to catch all the drip and mess. This is just a plastic bucket. I've lined it with tin foil because it's gonna get really messy. And then some paper towels to protect your work surface. All right, I'm gonna try to set up my camera and see if I can't show you what I'm doing. Okay guys, now I'm gonna show you how I mixed it up and what I use. Okay, so first off, I've already mixed the other three colors. Um, I wanna show you with the black because I thought it would be easier to see. Is you are gonna take about one part Elmer's glue to one part paint. So I'm just gonna kinda eyeball it. That looks about right. Let's show you what that looks like out to there. Then I'm going to take my paint and I'm going to add roughly the same amount. Okay. You can already kind of see some kind of cool separations happening because of the Elmer glue. Then I'm going to add about maybe like a tablespoon worth of water. This part you kind of have to guess. The water is just so that it flows nicely. Okay, take a stir stick and we are going to stir this up until it is all mixed. So make sure you scrape the bottoms, the sides, and it's completely incorporated. Okay. That feels good. So the consistency you want is really runny. You want it to be able to flow like that. Okay. So now I add the last and final ingredient. I haven't added it to the other cups yet. The pledge. I'm going to add about a drop to two drops per cup and then stir just a little bit. I don't want to stir this up too much. Okay. Now, just a quick couple of stirs. Let's 
can see I'm not incorporating it too much. I kind of want it to be its own thing. Okay, so I've got my paints prepped. Now to get the rest of it ready to go. All right, so I have my um, foam kind of resting on a paint jar. Try to get this as level as possible inside my bucket and have a lining to try to catch some of the spill off because there's gonna be a lot of spill. Uh, for this one, I'm actually just gonna do like a ribbon pour and then kind of tilt it so that I can get those pretty separations. Uh, because I want black to be kind of my primary color on this one, I'm gonna pour that first. So I'm just gonna come in here, just very lightly kind of pour that around. Then come in with some of my secondary colors. I really love this blue combo, so just put a little bit like that. And then go in and drip and drizzle some white. Ooh, bit much and lightly get the purple going in there okay and bring back some of my black maybe in the places where I got a little crazy okay so this is what we have so far as you can see it's beginning to separate so I'm just gonna grab it gently from the bottom and just start letting it slide until I start getting some prettier designs. I kind of want to break up that white. It's a little too much. Okay, set it down. Then you can take something like the handle of a brush Kind of pull it kind of introduce a little more mixing of those colors toothpick works really well too and then now shake doesn't hurt either okay so now to kind of help with developing some of those pretty cells I'm just going to dip this long bristled paintbrush in some of the drip off and I'm just going to flick it just gently squeeze it and flick this into the paint and we'll start getting more kind of pretty cells and disruptions. Okay. Let that do its thing for a moment. Bring that down here just a little bit. Kind of like how that looks. It's a little bit busy. So I'm going to try to add a few more black drops. Kind of break some of that up. At this point in time, there's no wrong or right way to do it. You just play with it. Um, there's a hundred million ways to do this. There's a lot of people who've made wonderful YouTube videos on how to accomplish this. This is mainly just the recipe that I used um, to do this on the cheap. So have fun with it. Um, my plan is if this holds its design, which I think it will, um, my other pieces that I did earlier are looking really good, then I'm going to Try to seal it using some of the spray sealer that Black Magic Craft introduced us all to, and um, introduce these in some gameplay. And I'm, I'm going to try this on some 3D objects as well, and see 
if I can get some stalagmites um, with this kind of look. And the longer you leave it, the more it's going to begin to develop all of these really cool patterns. It'll keep separating. Um, that's it. Have fun, guys. Let's make really cool, like, slime puddles, um, portals, weird rock patterns. If you just stuck to black and white, you can make a really pretty marbled tile for, like, maybe a palace. Um, that's it. Thanks, guys. Bye. Okay, I tried one last experiment and I wanted to show you. Um, this was a piece of pink foam that I have blocked using uh, construction sand and had um, painted black. I was going to do kind of a black magic craft style tile and I just never got around to painting this one. So I did, it's the exact same colors that I mixed up earlier. I just used the leftovers to do this big one because I didn't want them to go to waste. and. It did something really interesting. I wasn't sure it would do anything if it wasn't on a smooth surface, but the little um, beads of sand actually really aggravated it. And I got a lot more little interesting designs. It really broke up in kind of a cool way. So I would say definitely play with it on different textures because it made all of these cool things, which I didn't really get in my previous tiles. So give it a try, play with it, see what happens. Um, the only thing I wanted to say, I didn't say earlier, is I wouldn't recommend doing this on a piece of like cardboard or the dollar store foam core. Anything that has uh, the ability to really warp is not going to do well with as much fluid. It needs to be sturdy, which is why I did it on the pink foam because it can withstand the weight of all this paint and glue while it dries. But yeah, give it a try. Make something really fun. I can't wait to see what everyone comes up with. Bye!